So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the demo. We've got our three defenders, and we're just going to walk through a few scenarios that we saw on the video there. So if we can set up, and the first one we'll look at, and this was the first one we saw with Vista. Let's imagine that this is a scrum, and we've hit the midfield, and we're going to just try and look at isolating a forward on the short side. So we throw a ball wide. We don't make that much too much ground. We end up in the 12 channel. But what he's doing as he's running across is he's looking at the back row. If he sees both of the back row or three of the back row get to the far side, he knows he's got one of the fat lads on the short side. And what he tries to do then is he tries to step out back against him and lean into this pocket. By leaning into the pocket, he pulls the shoulder forward and the outside foot of the front five defender, tries to make a tackle, bounces out, accelerates through, and they keep the ball alive. Now, he does that very, very well time and time again. You'll see him go against the grade. That's fine from a scrum from set piece because you pretty much know where everyone is. But let's just run a multi-phase scenario. So they've gone through three or four phases. We go wide. We don't really make much ground here. We don't really go over the gain line. So what's he thinking now? Right, I want to go back against the grain. I've got ball carriers. This time I've got a bigger ball carrier who's going to make some ground. He stops there. He's made ground. And as he comes across, you'll see what he looks at. And this is for all the kids at home if you're playing nine or if you're a coach. What he's looking at is he's looking at the body language of these two guys. It's called matching up. If you see a tight head prop and you're 60 minutes into the game, you know he's tired. If you see a second row who's blowing, his hands are on his knees, his shoulders are turned in, you know he's tired. And this is what he does really well. He gets across, we saw it on the video, Ratuni Arawa had his shoulders turned in towards the rook. He was ball watching at the rook. His outside foot was way too far forward, so his hips were angled this way. That means if you see the outside hip forward, as a defender, he cannot tackle you with his right bum cheek. It's impossible. Equally, he's trying to make this guy shift to the outside. So what he does, and he does this a lot, is he breaks and he stands. So he stands, he pumps the ball, which means he moves out the gap, and then he throws the ball to the outside. They just run a little unders line, which is really good, and it's a very clever piece of play. So we'll run through that at a little bit more pace that I can actually manage nowadays, which is still a lot faster than U6. <laughs> so we've got the rook here. We've got the ball to the outside. It's a lovely pass. He's then looking back. He's coming back against the grain. Here he goes again. And now this time, we'll just run it one more time. We've made the tackle, so he's going to throw the pump, steps him out to the outside, and he makes the break. As we said, what he's doing is he's controlling the guard and the bodyguard as often as he possibly can. Now, if you're a back, it doesn't have to be a nine. You can be a winger. You can be a centre. You get in that position. On your way to the rook, have a look. It's quite easy. You just have to count. If there's three defenders here and four defenders there, this is the channel to run at. If one of your defenders is a little bit tired and maybe had too many dinners, then he's the guy you want to isolate. I'm not saying you have, by the way. But he's the guy you want to go after. And if you can control the forwards, you can control the rook, and you can control the attack. And that is what Mitchell does.